Hey guys, American Pizza Books here. Uh, I'm back today with another book review. Um, and today we're going to be reviewing The Store by Bentley Little. Uh, this is my third book by Bentley Little, and I believe this one was published in 2000. And I've noticed that there's kind of a running theme with Bentley Little in terms of his books. Like, most of them always start with, like, the, and then, like, you know, so, like, the resort, um, the academy, the store, you know, the handyman, you know, so I think that's kind of cool. Um, the other two books that I've read by Bentley Little are The Haunted, which was the first one that I read, and The Handyman, which was the second one, and then now The Store. And I can honestly say every book by Bentley Little that I've read, I've really, really enjoyed. Like, I, I've not been disappointed yet. Um, you know, there, and he's got a huge catalog of books to read, so I'm, I'm really excited to, like, work through them and whatnot. I know that a lot of people say um, his father's son is, like, probably his worst book or, or something like that. I've read the synopsis and it sounds interesting, but... I know that's what people say, but I'll probably get I'll probably get that one and even read that one eventually, even if a lot of people do say it's one of his worst ones. But um, but I, I noticed a lot of people mention the store, and so that's why I decided to read this one next. And it was also just the only other one that I had by Bentley Little. Um, so the basic premise is there is a town in Arizona, which again is like where a lot of his books take takes place, and like in little towns in like Arizona and whatnot. Which is, again, kind of similar to, like, Stephen King in a way, because a lot of Stephen King stories take place in Maine. And, like, a lot of Bentley Little's books takes, takes place in, like, you know, like, little Arizona towns and whatnot. So that's kind of cool. But it's this little town, and basically a new retail store comes into, you know, the town and is called The Store. Um, and... It, at first, it seems like, okay, whatever, it's, you know, new business, whatever. There's some people, the main character, Bill Davis, uh, isn't really very happy about it, and some of the people aren't either, um, because the store is being built on ground that has always been, like, appreciated by the, the locals and whatnot. Um, but at first, it seems like, you know, pretty, eh, pretty ho-hum. It's just a new a new retail chain and whatnot being, being put into the town. Um... You know, some people are worried that it's going to become like a monopoly and whatnot and put other businesses, well, out of business essentially because there's already uh, another grocery store there and whatnot. Um, and the store is kind of notorious because it's it, it, the, the store, the brand, has other stores in other parts of the U.S. and whatnot. And there's been a lot of, like, cases involving, like, accidents and tragedies and deaths uh, related to this chain which you find out later on in the book. But it starts out kind of, eh, okay, whatever. And then as it goes on, you know, events start to happen, kind of supernatural events, and also just kind of really grisly, violent events. Um, and as the story goes on, the store starts to, like, take over this town, and even to the point where they, like, privatize the police and whatnot, and it just it's absolutely, like, insane. Um... I guess this is kind of a spoiler, but there's one scene where they're, like, after they've, like, privatized the police and everything, and they're, like, hunting down, like, homeless people and, like, beating them and, and like, throwing them into vans and, like, taking them, and it's just, like, it was horrifying. It was really, really, really disturbing. Um, but that's, like, the basic premise, and then, obviously, you've got your main characters, um, and so on and so forth. So, as far as, like, my opinions on this book, uh... I thought it was, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, I thought it was great, I thought it was very, very disturbing, um, you know, one thing that I do, I will say is that I really like how Bentley Little writes characters, it does, and I keep, I, I hate to keep bringing up comparisons to Stephen King, but Stephen King is probably one of the best authors, in my opinion, who does, like, characters really, really well, in the sense that, like, he writes characters as, like, just everyday people, that, like, you would probably come across and interact with in your day-to-day -day life. And I feel like Bentley Little does that that very same thing really well, too, where he creates these characters that are just really relatable and, you know, kind of flawed in their own way, but overall, like, you know, you can you can usually root for them. And I really like the main character, which is Bill Davis and his, his wife, um, Jenny, and he's they've got two daughters, uh, Sam and Shannon. And they both end up working at the store, um, and 
some weird stuff starts to happen with Sam, who is the older daughter, and then eventually Shan gets hired in with the store as well, and she starts to notice some weird stuff going on. And of course, Bill is kind of against them working at the store, and he's pretty against the store throughout the entirety of the story, just about. But I really enjoy the characters. There's other characters as well. There's Ben, who is kind of like the local, like, editor, you know, editor, reporter, essentially. And then there's, um, I think his name, his first name was Street McHenry, I think. And he, like, owned an antique shop, or I think it was an antique shop, or um, an antique shop, or something like that. He owned one of the, like, local shops in the town. So you kind of see, like, how he's impacted and whatnot by the store, just because the store is basically acting as a monopoly to every business in town essentially um like the store will get like they're gonna they're gonna invest in having like a barber shop so like the local uh barber shop and beauty salons in the town get like put out of business essentially and have to close down um and it really just goes to show like it just the nature of businesses that cause monopolies on other smaller businesses and whatnot so it is kind of a commentary at the same time but the characters are really well written. The pacing is perfect. Um, this is another thing that I've noticed with Bentley Little's books, at least the three that I've read so far anyways, but the pacing is really, really good. There's no like sagging middle, you know, where you feel like things really just slow down and whatnot, which again is kind of a problem with like, for example, and again, I'm gonna bring him up again, but like Stephen King's work, like, in Stephen, with a lot of Stephen King's books, like, they're usually very good, but there's always kind of, like, that slow middle, you know, in between where things really, really just come to a screeching halt, and I never really felt that with the store. I didn't feel like there was really anything that didn't need to be there or anything that just felt gratuitous and didn't advance the story, except for maybe one thing, but we'll get into that here in a minute, but... You know, if, if I was to use, like, an analogy for, for Bentley Little's books, I would say it's kind of like a sirloin steak. You know, because with, with, with sirloin steaks, you know, most of the fat is taken off and whatnot. It's very lean, and that's how I would describe Bentley Little's books um, as compared to, like, Stephen King's books would be, like, more like a chuck roast, essentially. Um, so I really appreciated that. The writing is... It is really good. I've got no complaints. Um, when it comes to writing, I'm not, like, really, I'm not super, super picky. It doesn't have to be, like, super, like, purpley, you know, it doesn't have to be Dickens or anything like that. Um, you know, obviously, Bentley Little isn't going to be the next great American, you know, author of literature or anything like that, but, I mean, it's, it, for what it does, it does its job well. It gets you into the story, and it hooks you, um, and you feel like you are actually in the lives of these people experiencing the events that are going down. And in my opinion, as long as the writing in a book can do that, then it's doing its job, and it's doing its job well. And in my opinion, Billy Little's writing is very, very good. Um, and it serves its purpose. Um, yeah, and, and, and again, like, very... Some of the things that just happened in here are really creepy. Um, the... Not the... Like, not the CEO, but, like, the, the store manager is, is super, super just slimy and creepy. And there are some, there are, like, a few moments in here where he, like, just will say things randomly. And it's just, like, what the fuck? Like, it just, it just comes out of nowhere. And it's, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, it just makes him even more, like, disturbing. and shows you how unhinged he is and whatnot. There's even one scene in this book that, that I read. And it was, like, it was almost, like like some sort of weird fucked up like fever dream-esque scene it's just like did that really just happen like there's this scene in this book where it's like this guy um is helping this lady with shoes and like he starts taking her feet and like sucking on her toes and it's, and it's just like are we getting like a scene with a foot fetishist here <laughs> like is this is this really happening and it's like well, of course it's happening um that was just really weird, but there's just, like, really, really weird scenes like that in this book, which I enjoy. It, it adds to, like, the kind of unsettling, creepy nature and whatnot. Um, you know, and then, like, the, uh, towards the end of the book, and again, I mean, spoilers if you haven't read it yet, but the main character, Bill, uh, because it, his older daughter, Sam, is, like, um, you, with his daughter, Sam, you don't really know if it's the store, like, possessing her, or if it's, like the power is just corrupting her. Um, 
you don't really know. Like, I kind of thought that, like, maybe the store had taken, like, possession of her, maybe. Um, and at other times, I thought, okay, well, maybe she has just become very, like, corrupt with the power and whatnot that she's been given. It was, it was weird. Um, weird in a good way, but, like, still, it was weird. I was, I was, I was wondering, like, what is making her act this way? But eventually, Bill gets the idea to kind of infiltrate the store, or not infiltrate it, but like he's going, he meets with the CEO to try to get him to uh, basically get, go to the CEO to get uh, his daughter out of the store because he wants her out and whatnot. Or, yeah, because both of his daughters start working for the store, and the younger daughter wants out, but they like will not let her leave essentially until her contract is up. They, they have like a very authoritarian way of keep, keeping people at the store and whatnot um and so he goes to see her to try to convince him and essentially what ends up happening is bill actually ends up becoming the owner of of the store in his own town uh and you see bill himself even starts to become like very corrupt under the power that he's been given and whatnot um you know, because, like, he starts out wanting to, you know, end kind of, like, the the power and the reign of the store, at least with his own daughter. Um, but then you see him becoming a part of it. Um, and it was really, really just fucked up how you saw even he was being corrupted and whatnot. You know, who, you know, one of the biggest critics of the store was, was being corrupted with power and whatnot. So, now, the one scene that I mentioned... Um, so, this is a horror novel, and I get that, you know, a lot of the times with horror, like, there will be things in there that will, like, that are meant to, like, shock you and, like, disturb you. Like, not just in one way, but in several different ways. And again, spoilers and whatnot. But there's a scene in here where, um, and it's towards the end, but, like, Bill is in a hotel because they put him in a hotel and whatnot. And because he's going to be cut, he's agreed to become one of the, the, one of the owners of the store and whatnot. They put him through this entire, like, ritual and process. It's, like, really, really fucked. Um, and essentially what happens is he wakes up in the hotel room and there's some random woman there that you find out isn't just some random woman. Um, and it, basically what happens is sh this woman ends up not seducing but like it came off honestly as kind of rapey a little bit i mean like not quite but he wakes up with this woman like on top of him essentially and it's it's it felt a little rapey um which maybe was the point it was probably the point um and essentially what ends up happening is he kind of ends up I guess cheating on his wife. Um, I mean, technically it is, but it's he didn't go. Out, he didn't like seek out this woman. She just, he just woke up and she's just on him and whatnot. So I don't know. Um, I didn't feel that it was entirely necessary. I felt like it could have been taken out, and although it does technically serve a purpose later on, like towards the very very end of the story, in a sense. Um, for the plot and whatnot, but even still, I feel like it could have been, like, it could have been taken out, and it, it, it wouldn't have really, like, it could have still been a really good, disturbing novel, um, without that, like, to me, it kind of just needlessly tainted the main character, who I really, you know, really liked and really rooted for up until that point, I mean, I still kind of did, but that kind of tainted things a little bit, um, and, like, it does show him being remorseful because he knows, even as it's happening, that, that what he's doing is absolutely, like, wrong and whatnot. And that he, he should be, like, exerting more, like, self-control and trying to, you know, um, stop the situation. But he doesn't. Um, so there is that, at least. And then, of course, you find out um, that the random woman uh, was Sam, his, his daughter. Um, so incest, uh, you know, which is always disturbing. Um but I don't know, like, again, it's, it's, it's horror and horror is supposed to shock you and disturb you and whatnot. I get that. Um, so I hesitate to say that it shouldn't have been in the story, but I felt like it was kind of unnecessary. Like, again, it could have been not there and it would have been fine. Um, but eh, I just could have done without it personally. I know others may disagree, but personally a little bit much um 
But aside from that, I, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I'd probably give it probably easily like a solid five out of five. I mean, even though that one scene aside, it was a really good book. Um, and not only was it like creepy and like disturbing, but it also, again, kind of had that commentary on like big business and, um, you know, monopolies and, and stuff like that and how power corrupts and whatnot, how it can corrupt like even people like Bill and, and, and whatnot, um, who, you know, are the biggest critics of corruption and whatnot. Even people like that can become corrupt. So, and, you know, I think that, and other people on YouTube have pointed this out who have reviewed this book, but I think that he definitely, it was like a criticism of like the Walmarts of the world and whatnot. So, um, but no, I, I really enjoyed this one. Um, let me know what you guys think. Definitely will not be my last Bentley Little book. I intend to get my hands on every book of his that I can find. I'm sure I can find all of them essentially um, and go through them. And I want to start, I want to do like a, an author discussion where I just discuss Bentley Little in general. Um, I kind of did that a little bit in this video, but I just want to do a more generalized discussion on Bentley Little himself. But anyways, it for this one. Let me know what you guys think. Um, and yes, peace and keep on reading.